Okay. So, welcome to another session of Mandela Theory Seminar. Today we have with us uh, Shomi Nongi. So, she, Shomi has recent, uh, recently joined IIC as a postdoc under Professor Arina. And prior to this, she did her PhD from the Indian Statistical Institute of Kolkata under the supervision of Professor Arijit Bosch and Professor Saurabh Chakravarti. And before that, she obtained her bachelor's and master's degree from Jadavpur University. And her research interests lie in discrete geometry, heritage theorems, and polynomial methods in geometry. And today, she is going to talk about her work on piercing axis parallel boxes with axis parallel field maps. Over. So, thank you. Today, I'm going to talk about piercing axis parallel boxes with axis parallel key frames. This is a joint work with Shutana Chakraborty and Arijit Ghosh, my supervisor uh, from IC. So, let us first see the outline of today's talk. So, first I uh, present Helix theorem, then go to PQ theorem, and then present uh, the infinite version of PQ theorem, namely this Alephard K plus 2 theorem. And finally, I show our result about uh, Alephard 2 theorem, that is for axis parallel boxes. So, Helix theorem is a fundamental result in discrete geometry. This gives us idea about intersection of a given family of compact convex sets. Suppose we have this family of compact convex sets in R2, and we want to find whether the family have a common point or not. So, Helix theorem says that checking for every three tuple is sufficient. That is, if every three tuple has a common point, then we can immediately conclude that the whole family will have a common point. And if not, then we will get a three tuple that is not pierceable by a single point. That is, they are not uh, intersect. So here, uh, every three tuple has non empty intersection. We can check it. And also, uh, by Helix theorem, we can conclude that the whole family has a non empty intersection. So in general, in D dimension, Helix theorem says that. Checking if we are given a family of compact convex sets, then checking for every d plus one tuple is sufficient. And additionally, if the family is uh, finite, then we can drop off this compactness condition. Uh, checking Helix theorem for some special class of convex sets, say some axis parallel boxes or uh, disk, this is, these are some common pairs. And uh, axis parallel boxes is a very suitable choice. So, what is an axis parallel box in D dimension? This is nothing but a Cartesian product of D closed intervals. So, in R2, it looks like that. In R3, this is an axis parallel box. And Helix theorem says that if we are restricted to this family of axis parallel boxes, then whatever be the dimension, Checking for every pair is sufficient. For example, suppose we have this family of axis parallel boxes in R2. So if we do not have this condition of uh, that the every uh, member is an axis parallel box, then by Helix theorem, we have to check for every three doubles. But since we have this uh, extra information that every set is an axis parallel box, Checking for every pair is sufficient. Here, uh, we can check that every pair has a uh, common point, and we can also find that this point is common to all the sets. Yeah, exactly. Compared to. Yeah. So, just uh, we can apply Helix theorem coordinate wise, and this will give us the common. So, boxes are done in any dimension. Just to Sufficient. You can reduce multiple one dimension object and then interval. So now we'll come to uh, the because of this projection properties or what happens? And that's projection properties. And is this one for other like? Structures this way, or is very special about like this particular one, which will allow to access the other one. The non access part is not. So, what is the prediction? Like, predictions are like the same, the intervals, the yeah. prediction. 
then if you uh, look at intervals and if you all intervals are pairwise intersecting, then they have a common point. That you can say you can like take this particular point as a coordinate, and for each time you get the coordinate, and that that will give you a point which is pretty intersecting by all the vectors. <laughs> Uh, and so where are we using the fact that take, if I give you other objects whose projection across some dimension is interval, this will not fall. I mean, in general, uh, there are different types of projection. We have those other types of projection. Projection for intersecting. Yeah, for me. Intersection should be some many projection. So it's much easier computationally as well for Finding this point is just now. Second. Okay. So, PQ theorem, uh, this is an important generalization of Finnish theorem. Okay, before going to that, uh, let me introduce some definition. So, suppose it is a family of sets in RT, and tau is a family of geometric objects. And we'll say tau to be a transversal of f if for every set in the given family there is some object in tau that intercepts the set f and in other words we say tau pierces f so let me give an example here say this uh, these are the given uh, family of sets f and these three lines these are tau and if we take any disk, then we see that at least one of the lines pass through that disk. So, this family of lines pierce this family of disk. Means what can make sense because there could be a geometric object that uh, you could have used this. Yeah. Okay. And like, what is a geometric, formally, what is a geometric object in RT? So, uh, it can be points. For Hilly's theorem, it was points. And uh, it can be lines or any K flag. Okay. Any so definition of it? Or? Uh, generally, for uh, these Hilly type settings, we are using these uh, points, lines, K flags, etc. Something that has a linear position? Or? Yeah. Kind of that, but I'm not sure whether it is restricted to only those kind of geometrical. Really, it's using convex object, like yeah. other circle, like yeah. They don't have linear. No, no, no. Yeah. but the uh, piercing object, uh, I I have not seen anything other than these few cuts. So we'll say a set, uh, a family F satisfies. PQ property with respect to some uh, transversal set tau, if for any T sets from that family, we'll find some Q of them among those Q, uh, among those T, such that those Q sets will have a common transversal from T. For example, suppose we have this six sets. And if we pick any three of them, we will find at least two of them to be intersect. For example, say we are. Uh, Sorry, what is T here and what is S? So uh, here T is set of points. All set of points. All set of points. And uh, sets F are only these six sets. Say any T. P is 3 okay. and Q is 2. So I'm saying that if you pick any 3 set, there will be at least 2 intersecting. No. Yeah. Because, uh, say, I'm taking these uh, 3 uh, rectangles. Uh, these 3 are not uh, one pierce away. That means uh, they are not intersecting. So, uh, Actually, we can just check for every three and we'll find something. Uh, this is the intersection of these three uh, 
three circles and if we have this uh, lower two circle and the upper box then only these two circles are intersecting box these two circles then this point pierces uh, these two but is distant from this so when q is d plus 1 you get that thing yeah p t and q both are d plus 1 then we get back here so these are the sets and say t is uh, tau is set of straight lines then this family also satisfies three to property with respect to line transverse. If your second so far f has been finite and t has. Uh, uh, no, I'm not saying f is finite. If can be infinite also. I'm just saying that pick any p, there will be some q which have a common transversal. Ready for all J. Yeah. So D plus one, D plus one is exactly fine. Yes. And D is the entire point set. Yeah. So, uh, Hadley and Deep Learner, uh, they introduced this uh, PQ uh, problem that says that suppose we have a family of compact context states in RD which satisfies PQ property. Then they ask whether we can give some constant so that every family that satisfies this PQ property, we can immediately conclude that there will be these C many points which will pierce the whole family. That is, we can uh, give some C points so that we pick any set from that family, it will intersect at least one of those C points. And this problem was open for nearly three decades. And then Allen and Platman they proved that there exists some constant so that a family that satisfies PQ property. Yeah, uh, of, there is some condition about PQ and D. Uh, P has to be at least Q and Q has to be at least D plus one. If PQ and D satisfies this property, and we have a family of compact convex sets satisfying this PQ property, then we can ensure that there is a constant C that depends upon this PQ and D, and the whole family will be pierceable by this C many points. Constant that depends on PQ. So, and what is? Yeah. So, actually, what? Of the of <laughs> yeah, so Hayes theorem says that if I put PQ uh, both D plus 1, then C of D plus 1, D plus 1, D is just 1. So that's a universal constant. Yeah. So an interesting fact here is that the C does not depend on size of size it. Of it. Yes. Otherwise, it will be zero. For yes. every F, it will be zero. Yes. Okay, so now, so far we were just interested about uh, piercing with points, but what if I uh, try to pierce it with higher dimensional objects, say lines or K flats or hyperplane. So uh, here I'm giving just an example, what I say, uh, what I mean by uh, trans, uh, piercing with higher dimensional objects. Then we have these four balls in R3, uh, five balls, five balls in uh, R3, and um, four of them are forming uh, vertices of our tetrahedron, and another one is just inside that tetrahedron. Now, this family satisfies four three property with respect to hyperplanes. That means hyperplanes means uh, in uh, just pain in 3D. So I'm saying that if, uh, any four of the balls, then you will get uh, a plane that passes through three of them. And this is true for any four balls from this family. 
So this family satisfies four three property with respect to Halpertian transverse. Any one point that R three. Any, uh, give me any three balls, I'll find a hybrid. Yeah. It has nothing to do with this family. Yeah. I'm just uh, giving an example by what I mean for the Q property. Uh, I don't think I proved that similar to this uh, TQ theorem for itself, we can also give a TQ theorem for this hyperplane transverse. That is, if P, Q, and D satisfies this property, and we have a family of compact convex sets in R, D that satisfies this P, Q property with respect to hyperplane transversals, then there exists a constant C value that depends upon this P, Q, and D such that whatever be the cardinality of the family, we can pierce it with C prime many hyperplanes. Then other objects are not satisfied, other. Or transferable inlet uh, uh, non line, but uh, some other curve, circulate picture. There is some theorem which says if you have any low dimensional non line curve, you can always lift it to higher dimensional hyperplane. So I think it is satisfied. It is okay to just study hyperplane transfer of the in general. Okay. For, and that will cover those objects as well. That's why probably we will only study hyperplane. Okay. And so this is the uh, so. We have PQ theorem for uh, zero transversal, that is points, and also D, plus, uh, D minus one transversal, that is hyperplane transversal. So then the next question is whether it is true for intermediate values of uh, uh, dimension and uh, that dimensional transverse. That is, uh, is it true for K dimensional transversals or K flats, where K lies between uh, zero and D minus one? Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So, in a previous example uh, of balls and uh, planes in R3, that satisfies 4 3 property with respect to planes. This also satisfies 3 2 property with respect to lines. That is, if we pick any three balls from here, we we'll get at least two that can be pierced by a single line. So what I'm trying to say that uh, in R3, can we uh, give a PQ theorem for line transversal? So interestingly, Alan, Kalai, Matoshek, and Meshulam, they proved that no PQ theorem is possible for K, trans K transversals, where K lies between 0 and D minus 1. That is, K is uh, not points or hyperplanes. And for those transverses, we cannot find any PQ theorem. So, is it clear so far? Any question? How do they, they, put, do they effectively show families of a uh, uh, like the uh, transverse and to PQ Yeah. Any idea of how far it be close? No. Yeah. I mean, three D invention line. So, what are the objects of K transfer? Uh, lines. Lines. Yeah. So, what kind of family was the example for which it can be used? Balls and lines also works for it. Yeah. In the base, at least one. Yes. So, one transversal, it is possible. So, one transversal in uh, two dimension, it is possible. Okay. So, uh, PQ, we are always uh, uh, assuming those. Uh, P is at least Q, at least D plus one. Any yeah. Is that you can always construct it, or it's a particular function of K, or we, we have to. Uh, so it is like P, Q, and uh, so first uh, D is given, then we choose P and Q, and for any P, Q, 
we are just uh, choosing k between uh, 1 and d minus 2 and we can produce that uh, a family that satisfies pq theorem uh, pq property but has not uh, finitely many i mean that means constant many uh, k flags k transverse size my question was like, yeah. for any pq satisfies the property you can produce such a family yes it's not that the pq are particular to the value of k no. particular no. Only you want to put this the key dimension of a fine space, which is satisfied that personality in the case. Yes. Okay. So now we come to the infinite version of PQ theorem. Namely, this Alephrat K plus 2 theorem. So let me first introduce this Alephrat Q property. So suppose we have a given family, infinite family of uh, any sets in R. And we will say that this family satisfies this Aleph not Q property if I take any infinite sequence from that family, I get at least Q of them which have a common transverse. So this number Q depends upon this. Uh, uh, time, uh, dimension of the ambient space and dimension of the transverse. It is final. Yeah. So, uh, for now, I can take Q to be any given number. And um, so, also, when we are uh, so, uh, the dimension of the transversal k is also given. So, I'll uh, to define this uh, property, a Lefner property, this uh, k and d can be removed from this uh, notation. Here is an example. Say, suppose we have this uh, family of infinite family of uh, d. And we want uh, to pierce this with uh, line transversal. That is, uh, okay. And if we take any uh, infinite sequence of balls from this family, at least uh, one of the, say, uh, okay. At least one uh, color ball will be repeated infinitely many and all those balls can be hit by just one single line. So uh, this family satisfies a left not in property with respect to lines for any given name. So PQ theorem here P is infinite, this Alef not. And uh, Okay, this is just property, right? defining the, uh, just the property. And so Q is just in here. And now. How do you define infinite set? Is it the ball? It can be any translations of ball, or how do you define the set of family F? So it can be any, uh, for now, I'm just uh, considering any given family of infinite sets. In a previous example, I was taking, I mean, I have balls uh, among these, uh, I mean, there are infinitely balls applied along this line, then this line and this line. And I'm just, I mean, giving an example, yeah. K flat is a K dimensional uh, linear space. And fine space. So linear space had to be passed through this origin, and I'm just saying it can be translated to any part. Here, Parles first introduced this uh, infinite version of PQ theorem. This says that. Uh, Uh, 
So I have just introduced here this uh, Aleph not Q K D property. So before uh, we have seen that uh, when uh, defining this Q, the dimension of the transversal has no role, right? But here uh, we'll say so oh, we are interested by piercing with K flex. And we'll say a family F satisfies this Aleph not UKD property if uh, I take any infinite sequence from that family, there will be uh, this KD many uh, QKD many sets uh, that will be pierced by a single K flag. So, and uh, like, yeah, points on a plane. And line does not satisfy this property for two more than three. Like we take infinite points yeah. on a plane, and I can ensure that no three of them ever lie on a line. Yeah. Yes. And okay. So, can I find us prove this Alephra K plus two theorem for? Families of R R type convex. Set. So, uh, this Aleph not K plus two theorem. Just for just for infinite sequence. Yes. So, okay. What is this R R type set? So, it says that it is a convex body that contains a ball of radius small r, and the set can be contained in a ball of radius capital R. So. This is an RR set, but this line segment is not RR set. And what? Yeah. Not not R3. In R3. 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 Uh -huh. R3. R3. Yeah. So even in R2, not in R1. In R1. R1, R2, R2. Yeah, R2 is fine. So. Yeah. Okay, so I. Uh, so it, it is uh, for R2 also, it is not. Uh, okay, uh, so, but Killer and Pyrus prove that uh, if we have. Uh, uh, family of RR fat convex sets in RD, and we are interested by piercing with K flats. Then, if F satisfies Aleph not K plus 2 property, then we can ensure that F has finitely many K transverses. So, uh, the property is like give me any infinite sequence from that family. I will get some k plus 2 that can be pierced by a single k flat. And if f satisfies this, then I can immediately conclude that f has finitely many k transverses. Um, so, uh, this is. Uh, Infinite, in infinite Ramsey theory, and uh, this have some analog. So, uh, here uh, is some observation about this uh, alpha q plus uh, k plus two theorem. First of all, this q k d is k plus two here, and this is optimal. So. Uh, any k plus one objects can be hit by a single k flat always, but it is not ensured that some k plus two can be hit by a single k flat. And the theorem says that if among any infinite uh, sets I can pick just a single k plus two element that can be hit by a k flat. That will ensure that the whole family have 
finitely many k transverse here the family has to be rf and for uh, pq theorem in finite version we could give a constant uh, for the number of uh, transverses but here we are not giving any constant we are just saying uh, the transversal number will be finite. Why am I saying this? Will be clear from this example. So, choose any uh, natural number n and consider f to be a family of n plus 1 disjoint, pairwise disjoint intervals and their infinite repetition. So, here. This n plus one uh, pairwise disjoint intervals, and I am taking just infinite copies of this, and considering this as the family F. So if I take any infinite sequence from F, at least one of the sequence will be repeated infinitely many times. So this satisfies Alexa two property, but. Uh, so PS F with points, we need at least n plus one mainly distinct uh, points. So we cannot give any constant uh, like finite version of PQ theorem to be the um, upper bound for this transverse. So now the question is that. R and R were appearing in the constant process. Uh, no, so far it is not appeared. It is just hidden in the proof process that we have to uh, get the sets to be R effect. R may not be a constant. No, this just R is smaller is strictly less than uh, strictly greater than zero, and capital R is strictly less than infinity. And so the question is this fact can we uh, reduce this fatness assumption? Oh, Keller and Pines showed that if we just uh, pierce with points, then uh, if if is uh, then this fatness assumption can be reduced. So take F to be a family of closed bonds. There is no restriction on this radius of this ball. So the fatness assumption is not here. And they showed that if uh, this family satisfies Alephra 2 property for points, then it has finitely many uh, point transverse. That means, so in RD, we have uh, an infinite family of closed balls such that if I take a sequence, infinite sequence from uh, the family, there will be at least two intersecting balls. And from there, we can conclude that there are finitely many points such that uh, if I take any ball from that family, I'll have at least one point in that ball. And so the next question is uh, can we uh, for higher dimensional transversals? Uh, can we reduce this fatness assumption? So, uh, for k transversals where k is greater than zero, strictly greater than zero, uh, they could not prove this for family of balls. Rather, they proved it for uh, near balls where this uh, small r and capital R have some condition. I did this infinite PQ theorem for axis parallel boxes and axis parallel cables. So, what is an axis parallel K flat? So, it is of the form. So, a K flat has at least uh, exact at least K many uh, free dimension uh, free coordinates, and the coordinates which are not free. 
it is constant. So, in R3, an axis parallel plane looks like this. This line is not axis parallel. But this one is an axis parallel line. Actually. All points like whose d minus k components are fixed. Yes. What we have proved that if we have an infinite family of excess parallel boxes in Rd such that it satisfies a Lefner 2 property for excess parallel k frames, then Ff finite set. Again, axis parallel k transversal. That means we have a family of axis parallel boxes, and I pick any infinite of them. I find at least two boxes and an axis parallel k flat that passes through both the boxes. If a family satisfies this condition, then there will be some finitely many axis parallel k flat that will pierce the whole thing. For example, say we have this uh, family of axis parallel boxes. So uh, one along this line, infinitely many, and one along this line. And if we pick any infinite of them, there will be uh, at least two from either say this BIBJ form or CICJ form and any of them can be hit by uh, axis parallel line and from this we can conclude that the whole family have finitely many axis parallel transversal. This is interesting by the fact that you are again not using the part method. Yeah and so also could have applied. Yes. And also, uh, this Q does not depend on uh, dimension of the transversal. Mm -hmm. This is 2. Just for Haley's case, for point transversal, it was 2. And here, for any K transversal, it is 2. So, uh, uh, the boxes, I mean, a point can be also considered as an axis parallel box. In this, just in example, this is a. But in a assumption of the theorem, there is no fatness. So, so far, uh, we have either uh, infinite PQ theorem for balls or near balls in any way, uh, or, or it will have some uh, fatness assumption. So, firstly, here for boxes, there is no fatness assumption. Secondly, for balls or near balls, it was rotationally symmetric objects. But surely boxes are not rotationally symmetric. And here we are taking transversals to be axis parallel. We can show that this axis parallel condition cannot be reduced. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. That satisfies in the two property for excess parallel case maps. It will have finitely many excess parallel yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh so any box that has volume non zero, yeah, it is fair. Yeah. yeah. By already the previous is the bar. Boxes have non zero volume, then you already get the theorem. Yes. So what you are showing is even if the boxes have zero volume, they are yeah. also. Yeah. So actually, in the proof, uh, no, I mean, we do not have to uh, give any argument depending on the volume or uh, the. That, that is, yeah. The previous theorem, right? yeah. that is already follow that if the boxes have non zero volume, then already this is from the previous theorem. Yeah. What you are doing is a more general. Yeah. I don't need to go for the volume argument, but yes. I already have non zero volume, previous result already impaired. Yes, and also uh, for previous result for k flats, 
uh, we have to check for k plus two uh, many sets to have a single k transversal. Here only two is sufficient. Size, uh, can that be arbitrarily large? Yes. That's why uh, the previous argument that I showed for point that also generalized here. Yeah. So, no, uh, I mean, uh, we cannot uh, say anything about the size, uh, how, how long, uh, how large it can be. We are just saying it will be finite. It is, yeah, it is existent here. So, uh, there is no estimate about the size or anything. So, we can show that uh, we have a family of uh, rectangles. The rectangles are not uh, axis parallel, but they, satisfy, they are pairwise in the intersecting. But uh, they cannot pierce by any finite number of points. Here, uh, we are considering this quadrant of an unit circle. And uh, so theta n is an angle pi by 2 to the power n, and n is any natural number. So this point I am taking as un, and at un I am uh, drawing the tangent to the circle. I am just taking the segment lying between this uh, x1 equal to 1 and x2 equal to 1. Uh, I am considering just this line, uh, this segment of the tangent at this point un, and then drawing a box. This box at u n, I am taking the width of the box to be 1 by 2 to the power n. So, as n grows, the thickness of the box is reducing. And I am considering the family F to be all these boxes, collection of all these boxes. And here, any two boxes are intersecting because any two tangents are intersecting, so the boxes are intersecting. But we cannot find a finite number of points that will intersect the whole family. So, uh, since at any point, at most two tangents can pass through that point. Points on the circle, yes. Yeah. So for the boxes, as in uh, grows larger, the boxes are going to be just this line segment only. You are allowed to pick points anywhere. Yeah. Because for a, for any given uh, set of points, finitely many points, we can get infinitely many tangents that are not passing through it. It's true, but for any point, infinitely many tangents are also possible. Yeah. I have to pick just one box that is different from all of these points. So. Uh, I can think of it like that. So, suppose I have given m points. Then, uh, I can have some k. Sorry? Not necessarily on the circle. Any, no, any, any, any finite m point. And we can find some say, infinitely many indices uh, for which the tangents are not passing through that point. 
and for those indices of boxes i keep uh, the index growing as far as uh, the boxes remains to uh, i mean it is going only to be that line segment and if i i mean for sufficiently large in i can find a box that will be distant from all these points intersected there are many tangents that have at least uh, some finite separation from from this point uh, at yeah. least some epsilon separation yeah and then once you look at the tail of the sequence where well, your yeah, box with you know, less than epsilon mm -hmm. then you are the then yeah, you would guarantee yes. some finite yes. and as a corollary we can show that if we have a family of uh, compact convex sets in rd such that uh, the bounding axis parallel boxes satisfies alf dot 2 property for axis parallel hyperplanes then the family f can be tier 3 finitely many axis parallel hyperplanes so what i am saying suppose this is uh, a set from that family, and I am taking uh, the enclosing axis parallel box, and I am saying that uh, okay, so the family satisfies Alephra two property with respect to axis parallel hyperplanes. So uh, any two boxes, uh, not. So here it does not come the uh, picture boxes. So it says that only uh, the sets, think of it like that. Uh, I have infinitely many compact convex sets in RD. I take any infinite of them. I get at least a pair of boxes that can be hit by an axis parallel hyperplane. This will ensure that the whole family can be pierced with finitely many axis parallel hyperplanes. So, connected on no. uh, convexity assumption can be reduced. Let's just say in compact convex sets. So, this would mean that if D is 2, I can look at points, like infinitely many points, and any pair of four axis parallel. Yes. So I have infinitely many points with the property that if I pick any sub, sub, infinitely large, say that I find only two points that are kind of the same x coordinate or y coordinate, and then you're saying, any such as has finitely many. So for point, uh, uh, this axis parallel condition, how can I put this? Uh, it's F is point. Point. point and F is set of points. Oh, okay. Two. Okay, okay, okay. F is yeah. set of points. Okay. So yeah. have to, uh, I mean, no volume. <laughs> <that> <laughs> is yes. Seeing if it has this LF2 property, then the number of x coordinates and y coordinates in f has to be final. Number of distinct x coordinates and y coordinates. Final. For any finite set, you always find like. No, only two you are finding. Yeah. The whole axis parallel finding. Yeah, this is like saying the, the x coordinate. I'll, if you give me any so, sub infinite sub subset of f, two points will have the same x coordinate. Yes. But then F has to be finite. F itself has to. I mean, the fact that it has a finite collection of TFC hyper axis parallel hyperplanes means that the number of x distinct x coordinates is finite, distinct y coordinates is finite. So yeah, F has so to be just that grid. 
Yes. So F is just a grid with the points repeated again. F cannot be anything else. Okay. Points are not going to grid, you can go to other yeah. areas and then there are two points which are not detected by you. So it's kind of video. Yeah, exhausting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's mean, not surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Video will get proof will be complicated, but the no, modern no, government can't do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, this proof of this entire corollary is very simple. So uh, we can take any. Uh, set from that family? Yes, it's the proof of the curly simple if you believe the previous uh -huh. the access parallel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, for a set uh, from that family, I'm just considering the access parallel boxes, box enclosing the, this set. And uh, any hyperplane that uh, pierces this set A will pierce this box. And also, any hyperplane that pierces this box will pierce this set. And so, if I uh, apply the previous theorem on the family of these boxes, sorry? Yes. Yes, it's perfect. Nature is wrong. Okay. Yeah, I'm just I think the access parallel line, like, 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 like intersects. Okay. No, I mean, uh, for the hyperplanes, we do not need it to be access parallel. No, no, no. Uh, the this, box. This observation only works for access parallel hyperplanes. This one? Yes. I mean, really? this thing of the hyperplane, like this, it crosses here, but it yes. does not touch it. I pick the. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So any so this yes. this hyperplane. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do yes. we need the compartment or again like just say non-zero finite volume for it is already such? But that is already in bag with compartment. Yes. So the objects are non-zero but finite amount of volume. Mm -hmm. Then also I think this property should be. But I think only compact is one can show this we have not been right. Now I give a very brief sketch for that original theorem. So before that, okay. So um, I'll just prove it for R2. So in R2, we have infinitely many access parallel boxes. And uh, if I pick any infinite sequence from them, there is an access parallel line uh, which pierces at least two of the boxes. And from there, we want to show that the whole family will be pierceable by finitely many access parallel lines. So actually, we'll prove the contrapositive one. That is, if the uh, family is not pierceable by any finitely many access parallel lines, I give a sequence, infinite sequence, where no two is pierceable by an access parallel line. So, uh, I'll say a family to be one set if it is not pierceable by any finitely many access parallel lines. And this region, I'll call it a vertical state. So it is unbounded in uh, y direction, but bounded in x direction. Similarly, I uh, say this uh, region as horizontal state. So uh, I'll go, uh, I'll divide it, uh, the situation in two cases. One is uh, there is uh, no vertical or horizontal strip that contains a one set. So uh, if I 
see the boxes only in this region they will be pierceable by finitely many axis parallel lines similarly the boxes in this region they will also have finitely many axis parallel line transverse point uh, i'm just defining the, uh, two cases one is this one and another one is in any finite region there will be no uh, one uh, one set that is in any finite region uh, the sets will be pierceable by finitely many x parallel so if we take the first case that in no uh, vertical or vertical or horizontal strip there is no a one set so here i take just uh, first any any box b1 so here or here uh, the sub family is pierceable by finitely many lines so there must be some set that lies either here or here or here or here i just take that set and no two axis parallel line can hit this two set so in general suppose we have picked uh, m sets satisfying this condition then i get a vertical and a horizontal strip that uh, contains those m sets and outside uh, this two region i can definitely find a box from that family and i will take that as the m plus 1 x and this way i can grow the sequence like that was a part assumption yes that uh, and the uh, entire family is not pierceable by finite parameter uh, yes mm -hmm. All, and also i am saying uh, that uh, this vertical strip or horizontal strip does not contain any one set so does here contain yes and uh, the remaining case is that there is a bounded region where i can find a one set this uh, region is a uh, 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 this contains a one set. I am dividing this region into four sub areas. I am just taking the uh, middle line vertically and horizontally, and get this four edges. So at least one of them will contain a one set. This region again contains a one set. Again, I divide it into four sub regions, and here also I get a region that is um, that contains a one set. And I keep doing this, and eventually I find uh, two lines, vertical and horizontal, where. Uh, I mean, uh, so mm -hmm. if I uh, so very close to that two lines, there will be a one set. So uh, how I'm getting these two uh, lines? I'm just taking the limit of these two lines that I am getting for every one set, and after. Getting these two lines, first I will pick any box from that family that is not uh, pierceable by any of these two lines, and then I will define a subfamily this F T such that this F T is disjoint from uh, so. Uh, in ft i will collect all those boxes that is not pierceable by a uh, axis parallel pf along with this box b1 so how can i ensure that this f2 uh, this ft will be non empty because uh, for this line 
if i consider this region that is uh, in between these two lines this one the nearest uh, line for from this uh, vertical line and this one is the nearest line to the horizontal line and then in that region there will be some uh, one set because of the construction of this uh, this two lines cx and c1 and from that one set i pick a box so i think i have not make it very clear so this is because we're just okay so think of it like that so if i just uh, see at the um, region along uh, x axis it says that every time i am uh, bisecting the interval and then i am getting a point which is common to all the intervals so i'm partitioning it in that way such that uh, very close to that uh, point i always get an interval and if i just look at the uh, vertical strip from that point to any such uh, given length and also i repeat the process for this point in y axis and see the region of their intersection that region will contain a one set and i'll pick a box from that region so yeah and um, that is all so okay so we see that uh, if our family satisfies d d plus 1 d plus 1 property it will be pierceable by one point and that is the Halley's theorem and uh, for infinite uh, pq theorem we have said that uh, seen that if a family of fat objects that satisfies a left of k plus 2 property with respect to k transversal it will have finitely many k flats that pierces the whole family. And if we have family of access parallel boxes satisfying a left not two property for access parallel k flats, then the family will have finitely many access parallel k transversal. And this uh, access parallel condition cannot be relaxed. So that's all. For axis parallel number of directions or alignment that you need, was it finite or infinite? Uh, for last year, uh, okay. not true. Last claim that you had. Last. I mean, summary in the summary. Last slide. Oh, okay. Last slide. Yeah. Not true if the boxes are not axially parallel. Yeah. But uh, in that case, yes. How many directions are needed? Is it finite or it's still? Uh, it's no. not finite. Is it a constant? Or if I claim this, as it parallel only two alignments, so everything is yes. either vertical or horizontal. Mm -hmm. But let's say I allow you 45 degree alignment as well. Mm -hmm. Is it also true that in that case, it is not this kind of property that's not true, or for this uh, to be not true, you need really many, many different alignments, not only three, but some. Okay, actually, we have not seen yeah. this so direction. Yeah, yeah. So there are many directions. So yeah. either because many of these problems, it works for constant number of directions. Yes. So the actual parallel has two directions, but yes. as long as they have five or six types of alignment, mm -hmm. you can still find out. So, yeah, that's one question which might be interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so there is lamps outside in the lot.